We bet you've been trying your best to ignore the subject of NFTs, but it's gotten to the point where conversations about them seem impossible to avoid, and you're looking for a way to keep up. We understand you're not the only person asking what NFTs are and why people pay so much money for them. Most answers usually start off with basically, and then say something that might as well be in another language, leaving you more confused. But don't worry, because we've got you covered. In this video, we explain the full scope of NFTs. What are they? How are they created? Where do you buy them? So keep watching to know everything there is to know about NFTs. But before we begin, here's a riddle. What features a naked former president lying prostrate in the grass, cannot be touched or held in your hands, is free to download for anyone with an internet connection and cost millions of dollars? The answer? Digital Artist Beeple's NFT piece, Crossroad, sold for $6.6 .6 million, making history the most expensive digital art sale ever made. It was the most expensive digital art sale ever made until Christie's sold their first digital-only work of art, Beeple's Every Days, The First 5,000 Days, for a whopping $69.3 million. The burgeoning market for NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, is turning the art, music, and finance worlds upside down. Recently, Grimes sold almost $6 million of her digital art, rendering of tattooed, spear-wielding cherubs floating in purple-hued post-apocalyptic ruins as NFTs on Nifty Gateway, the premier marketplace for NFTs. Kings of Leon became their first band to offer an album as both a streamable collection of songs and an NFT. In the sports world, game highlights can even be bought and sold as NFTs, though anyone can watch these for free. Undoubtedly, NFTs have rapidly become the next big thing in cryptocurrencies crossover out of elusive anonymous e-wallet dealings and into the more public cultural web sphere. So, what are NFTs? An NFT or non-fungible token is a digital asset that represents real-world objects like art, music, in-game items, and videos. They are frequently bought and sold online with cryptocurrency, and they are usually encoded with the same underlying software as many cryptos. Although they've been around since 2014, NFTs are gaining notoriety as they're becoming an increasingly popular way to trade digital artwork. A staggering $174 million has been spent on NFTs since November of 2017. NFTs are also generally one of a kind, or at least one of a very limited run, and have unique identifying codes. Essentially, NFTs create digital scarcity, but many NFTs, at least in those early days, have been digital creations that already existed elsewhere, like iconic video clips from NBA games or securitized versions of digital art that's already floating around on Instagram. It's easy enough to understand that a piece of art can be created and exist on a screen, be it on your phone, computer, tablet, etc. Then, that piece of art can be seen, screenshotted, and downloaded by anyone online. But the more profound concept of NFT art is agreed upon value and ownership. Even if anyone can see it, download, print out, and hang up a piece of digital art, only a select few can own that exact piece. So, NFTs are a form of digital asset whose ownership is recorded on a blockchain. Because an NFT allows the buyer to own the original item, it contains built-in authentication, which serves as proof of ownership. Collectors value those digital bragging rights almost more than the item itself. But how are they created? What magic alchemy transforms any digital file into an NFT potentially worth millions of dollars? You can have the Genesis tweet that represents the item of interest in its full glory, yet you'll never find some missing or hidden aspect of that tweet by probing deeper or even getting its author, Jack Dorsey, to reveal some hidden digital layer. An answer to the question about what turns any old digital file into an NFT is that it's a digital signature applied within a digital marketplace. Digital signatures on a blockchain work in the same way. The blockchain functions as a digital marketplace in which ownership of digital items is transferred from one party to another by applying a digital signature to it and designating the buyer as a recipient. Commercial agents use a public-private cryptographic key in a blockchain-based digital marketplace. The key serves as the address to which digital items are assigned. The private keys are the way to sign these digital items, authorizing their transfer from one party or address to another. Therefore, if you want to sign a digital item over to a friend, you take it, attach it to your friend's address from his public key, and sign it with your private key. By signing with your private key, you authorize the change in ownership of the digital item from yourself to the friend, making clear to all members of the blockchain-based digital market that your friend now owns the digital item. And because the digital market is a blockchain, it is secure, unalterable ledger that reliably records the transaction. An NFT is created or minted from digital objects representing tangible and intangible items, including art, gifts, videos, 
sports highlights, collectibles, virtual avatars, video game skins, designer sneakers, and music. Even tweets count. Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey sold his first ever tweet as an NFT for more than $2.9 million. Essentially, NFTs are like physical collector items, only digital. So instead of getting an actual oil painting to hang on the wall, the buyer gets a digital file instead. Where do you buy them? If you're looking to start your own NFT collection, you'll need to acquire some essential items. First, you'll need to obtain a digital wallet that allows you to store NFTs and cryptocurrencies. Secondly, you'll need to purchase some cryptocurrency, like Ether, depending on what currencies your NFT provider accepts. You can buy crypto using a credit card on platforms like Coinbase, Kraken, eToro, and even PayPal and Robinhood. You'll then be able to move it from the exchange to your wallet of choice. Don't forget to keep fees in mind as you research options. Most exchanges charge at least a percentage of your transaction action when buying crypto. And once you've got your wallet set up and loaded, there's no shortage of NFT sites to shop. Currently, the largest NFT marketplaces are OpenSea.io. This peer-to-peer -peer platform bills itself as a purveyor of rare digital items and collectibles. All you need to do is create an account to browse NFT collections to get started. You can also sort pieces by sales volume to discover new artists. Rarible. Like OpenSea, Rarible is a demographic open marketplace that allows artists and creators to issue and sell NFTs. Rary tokens issued on the platform enable holders to weigh in on features like fees and community rules. Foundation Here, artists must receive upvotes or an invitation from fellow creators to post their art. The community's exclusivity and cost of entry, artists must also purchase gas to mint NFTs, means it may boast higher caliber artwork. For instance, Neon Cat creator Chris Torres sold the NFT on the Foundation platform may also mean higher prices, not necessarily bad for artists and collectors seeking to capitalize, assuming the demand for NFTs remain constant or increases over time. Although these platforms and others are host to thousands of NFT creators and collectors, ensure you do your research carefully before buying. Some artists have fallen victim to impersonators who have listed and sold their work without their permission. And that's it for today, and we hope you enjoyed it. And just be sure to subscribe to our channel for more of our awesome content. And please, give us a like and share the video. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our new uploads. We value your feedback, so feel free to share your thoughts with us in the comment section down below. I'm Mickey V, and I'll see you in the next video.